Us today, do you believe that you will not allow your your strongly held political beliefs to influence your judicial opinions? Is that do you believe that? The best evidence of the type of federal judge I will be yes, the type of do you judge, believe that? Do you believe that? Is the type of judge I have been for ten years who is one who always puts the law above my personal. Do you view. also believe in Bigfoot? Do you believe in the tooth fairy? Senator Kennedy confronts leftist witness on shocking tweets. Let's watch this Capitol Hill clip. Senator Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Judge Wise, you're not being honest with us, are you? That is incorrect. Well, we, we all may be poorer under President Biden, but we're not stupid. We, we have a long list of your articles and your opinions and your political statements. On March 8, 2017, you wrote an article for Time Magazine while you were a sitting judge. It's, you, it's entitled, Judge, Gender Laws Are at Odds with Science. I'm going to quote your words. When legislators blur the lines of church and state and enact laws that permit or prohibit conduct based on biological gender as only male or female, they place an impossible burden on the judiciary. End quote. Did I read that accurately? I do not know because I don't have the article in front of me. Well, I do. You also said in that article, quote, your words, not mine, sex has countless, countless natural permutations, end quote. Did I read that correctly? I believe that is consistent with medical science and under the Daubert standard, the science that comes in as expert testimony in trials. Um, on October 13, 2020, while you were serving as a state judge. You wrote an article for The Atlantic entitled, quote, your words, not mine. America's judiciary doesn't look like America. And you criticized this committee and President Trump for his judicial nominees. You said, quote, the ju these are your words, not mine. The judiciary crafted over the past four years does not look like America. Not one of these judges is black, and more than 90% were raised or currently identify as Christians. I don't know how you knew that. And then you say, quote, your words, not mine. Identity is the lens that filters everything and everyone we encounter, end quote. Did I read that correctly? Again, I don't know because I don't have the article in front of me. I do. I got it right here. Um, you wrote another article on July 31, 2020 for the San Francisco Daily Journal in which you advocate for the right of sitting judges to be able to go to protests, didn't you? That is incorrect. No, it's not. I'm looking at it right here. This is what you say. No judge should be ethical. Your words, not mine. You just said you didn't say them. You turned these articles over. No judge should be ethically constrained from speaking or taking action that reinforces that constitutional and moral imperative. May judges participate in demonstrations that denounce racism, support equal justice, and reinforce our constitutional rights to free speech and peaceable assembly? Yes. End quote. Did I read that correctly? I don't know because I don't have the article in front of me. I don't think she's going to answer any questions today. You, 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 if you're a federal judge, you're go, are you going to go to protests?
I would like to answer the substance of, your, of the underlying question that was asked. I'd like you to answer my question. I've only got another minute or so. Are, it, if you're a federal, have you, let me, in it, put it, let me put it another way. Um, have you ever gone to a, a, a protest, a public protest, while you're a sitting judge? <laughs> Senator Kennedy, the article that you are referring to Have you to ever was gone written? to a protest while you're a sitting judge? I do not believe that I have ever attended a protest as a sitting judge or perhaps ever in my life. Uh huh. And, and you talk about Girls Inc. You say you've never heard of them. You were on the, or you, or you don't know that much about them. You, you were on the board from 2014 to the 2024. You're still on their board, aren't you? I'm not. My term expired this last month. And, and you've and given them over $50,000, haven't you? I do not believe that is correct. That's what your report says. And this is, this is, the, uh, this is the same girl's ink that says, quote, on its website, here's how they define girls. Quote, girls refers to gender expansive youth, cis girls, trans girls, non-binary youth, Gender and non-conforming youth, gender queer youth, and any self, any girl-identified youth. Did I read that correctly? I don't know. I've never heard of that policy or that definition. Right. You from never girls think. Um, listen, did, 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 in in spite of your, I mean, can I just have thirty more seconds? In spite of your strongly held political be beliefs, and we've got all of them, all your articles, they're long, as long as King Kong's are, um, are you telling us today, do you believe that you will not allow your, your strongly held political beliefs to influence your judicial opinions? Is that, do you believe that? The best evidence of the type of federal judge I will be, yes, the type of do you judge... Believe that? Do you believe that? the type of judge I have been for 10 years who is one who always puts the law above my personal Do you view. also believe in Bigfoot? Do you believe in the tooth fairy? Your time has expired, Senator. Do you believe Senator, you, Jimmy Hoffa died of natural causes? Senator cost? Hirono. Well, that's very nice of you. Senator Hawley. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, congratulations to all the nominees. Thanks for being here. Judge Wise, let me just start with you. So, as I understand it, you don't think that there, there really is any clear-cut distinction between male and female as biological categories. Is that correct? That is not correct. That's what you wrote. Sorry, that is not correct. Well, that's what I you think... wrote. Um, look, I'm, I'm reading your article, your Time Magazine article. D just to be clear, you wrote this while you were a sitting judge, 2017? You were on the bench? That is correct, after okay. a case I had. Right. So, interesting choice to be writing opinion pieces about your cases. But, in any event, you say that controversial pieces of legislation enacted in the last two decades rely on a clear-cut interpretation of sex, what I just asked you. But you say that that's wrong. In fact, gender is an intricate continuum and not two tidy boxes. That's what you say. So have you changed your opinion? You just gave me a different answer. I believe that generally speaking, there are two sexes, male and female, that are designated by a doctor at birth, and that that applies to the vast majority of people. But that laws that are based on that distinction are impermissible. That's what you say in this article. Is that correct? That's still your view? That is not what I say. Really? Article. You say that if there is, a, 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 for instance, a law that requires a distinction between male and female in bathrooms, that the judge, judges cannot, pro, cannot apply that law with any consistency, can't co apply it consistent with equal protection. Uh, there, are, there are no, what is it? Uh, it's virtually impossible for judges to consistently apply a law that permits or prohibits conduct based on whether someone is a man or a woman. So the, all, all bathroom laws that require biological sex, that designate bathrooms based on biological sex are impermissible? 
That is not the position that I took in the article. That's what it says. It's impossible for judges to consistently apply a law that permits or prohibits conduct based on whether someone is a man or a woman. And you specifically cite bathroom laws as an example of this. In fact, you criticize the then Trump administration's designation of gender-based bathrooms. Right? Sounds like you've made up your mind on a lot of things, but I just want to get clear on this because this is an important issue, certainly to people in my state. It's so, very so you think issue. that you think that bathroom designation, same with locker rooms, I guess, girls' locker rooms, impermissible. Biological men have to be permitted into girls' locker rooms. That is absolutely not what I said. In that is absolutely the import and the takeaway of your piece. You suggest at least three different constitutional problems with any gender-based laws, including specifically bathroom laws. You write about it. Equal protection violation, due process, void for vagueness. I was making a list as I was reading through. You, you say that our biological variability means that a two-bathroom, even two-sex-based approach is inadequate. Judges cannot apply it. So if Title IX is interpreted to protect women's sports, biological women playing sports with other biological women, it's unconstitutional? Senator. That's a yes or no. I was referring to the five babies born a day that doctors have challenged. No, you wrote an article that is extremely broad that pronounces on a range of issues and pronounces quite definitively. What's this comment at the end of your article about the fact that judges must see the world through a secular lens and when legislators blur the lines of church and state to enact laws that permit or prohibit conduct based on biological gender as only male or female, they place an impossible burden on the judiciary. What's that mean? The distinctions between male and female are a violation of church and state? Judges have to be able to administer these laws if the direction... And, and I have to tell you, I work really hard to get it right, to do exactly what Congress tells me to do and the legislature tells me to do. And as a result, if a doctor finds it difficult to identify at the moment of birth for certain children... Is a, but, is, is a law that distinguishes between male and female a violation of church and state? You say when legislators blur the lines of church and state and enact laws that permit or prohibit conduct based on biological gender as only male and female, they place an impossible burden on the judiciary. So this is a First Amendment violation? If what you are telling judges is that in order to I'm not telling you anything. I'm reading you your comments, and I am asking you if you are still committed to these, and it sounds like you are. I have to tell you, I think these positions are insane. I think the idea that laws based on the distinction between male and female are a violation of church and state is insane. Totally insane. I think the idea that laws that would say women's locker rooms are protected from biological men, that those are impermissible, that's, that's insane. But that's what you say in this article. You're going to have to recuse yourself in a lot of cases, aren't you? Will you recuse in, in every case involving biological sex if you are confirmed? Senator, respectfully, that is not what the article says. You have pronounced on all of these issues. Will you recuse yourself in any case involving Title IX, biological sex, challenges to locker rooms, girls' sports, bathroom bills? All of those things are covered in this article that you wrote while you were a sitting judge. Justice is blind. Huh. It sure doesn't sound like it. Don't you think that was impermissible? Will you recuse? Let's get an answer to that. Senator, your time is expired. Will you recuse? I did not take a position as to those issues that you have raised. You took a position on all of these things, and your position is insane. Totally insane. I will absolutely not vote for you. There's not a world in which I could support you. I can't believe you have been nominated. And if you are confirmed, which I hope will not happen, you absolutely must recuse across all of these cases or stand in violation of the Code of Judicial Conduct. I'm shocked you're sitting here today. Thank you, Senator. Senator Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations to you all. Uh, Judge Wise, I do want to start with you. We've talked some about Girls, Inc. this morning, and I know that you had said 
uh, in response to Senator Lee that um, the statement he was referring was sent out or on the website of the national organization and not Alameda County. So I um, went to Alameda County, and their website says, and I'm quoting, girls refers to gender expansive youth. Cis girls, trans girls, non-binary youth, gender non-conforming youth, gender queer youth, and any girl identified youth, end quote. So since you were a member of that group for years and supported them, is it fair to assume that that is also your definition of girl? Thank you and good morning. Good morning. I and I apologize, I certainly didn't uh, min mean to misspeak when it came to what Senator Lee had asked. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with those statements. But you and are I've never familiar with Alameda County, and I, that's what I'm asking for your response. Is your definition of girl the same as Alameda County has on their website, their Girls, Inc. website? I have not thought about a definition of girl in that way before. So I don't think those are the words that I would. definition of girl and woman. What's your definition? I think certainly as I was raised and I have, I have believed that, the, generally speaking for nearly all of us, the sex that we are assigned at birth by the doctor is what we are, and it's Okay. I think that applies appropriately right, to the majority. Let me move on because I want to talk to you about the group's stance on Title IX. And in 2022, the National Girls Inc. organization sent a letter to Secretary Cardona urging him to issue rules regarding sex equity in athletics, including transgender students' participation in school sports so that student athletes are protected from discrimination. And I'm quoting that from the letter. So do you agree that the Department of Education should issue a rule on sex equity for student athletes? I have no opinion about that, Senator Blackburn. Okay, well. I will say I don't ascribe to the particular statements that you were saying, I have not read them, I have not seen them, and it's not something that I would advocate. And as a sitting judge who hears, I have more than 15,000 cases on my docket right now. Um, you know, it, these types of issues potentially could come before me. Of course they're going to come before you, and it's important to know where you stand, and it's important to know Title IX is under attack. And we have witnessed that. And I represent Tennessee. I hear from women. I hear from uh, female athletes all the time about their concerns on that. So is there ever a situation in which it's appropriate for a biological male to compete in women's sporting events? Because you say you believe our sex is what it is assigned at birth. So should a biological male be allowed to compete against a biological female? I, I, again, Senator Blackburn, I don't have a personal opinion about that because I think those things are regulated by sporting agencies and organizations. I, I, I really don't. I sincerely have no view about that. It kind of sounded like she backtracked a little in her beliefs about biological females and trans females in sports. What do you think? Okay, let's talk about your Think Outside the Prison article that you wrote in 2021. Uh, it was published in the Daily Journal. You made some interesting contentions in that article, and I want to ask you about those. You said, and I'm quoting, over the last decade, judges have had fewer practical or effective options for the placement of individuals who regularly find themselves mired in the criminal justice system. End quote. When you say, and I'm quoting again, find themselves mired in the criminal justice system, 
that seems to suggest that individuals who have committed criminal acts have simply ended up in the criminal justice system by happenstance rather than as a direct result of their actions. So do you think individuals who have committed violent crime, that they deserve to face consequences for those actions? Senator Blackburn, I don't think that you were here earlier when I spoke, but even when I gave my opening remarks, I... No, I was watching. I, yeah. I, I'm actually very glad that you asked me that because I absolutely believe that people need to take responsibility for their personal actions and that we need to hold people accountable for violating the law. The safety and security of our country, I think, is, is well, deeply then, rooted in that. What would push you to do an article like Think Outside the Prison? Sure. May I respond? Of course. <clears throat> That article specifically was focused on, um, because there has been bipartisan support, I, I think, to reduce the, the number of people who are incarcerated, and judges have a lot of people who come through the system repeatedly who are mentally ill or drug addicted, and it was raising the issue that it was very important that judges either needed to have people who, who have committed crimes they need to either be able to go to prison where there's a place to put them, or they have to be able to go to a facility for treatment or mental health. And if none of those are available, we have some serious consequences, I think, for our communities, including homelessness. Thank you. There you have it. Leave a comment on what you think. And if you want to watch another interesting hearing, click up here.